Welcome back to the RabbitMQ series. You just sent your very first message, and now it's time to have a look inside your RabbitMQ server or your queues visually to see if the message has actually been sent or not. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. I'm going to show you two ways. The first one is the command line window. So you're going to open up a command line window again, go to your RabbitMQ server directory as bin. And then you're going to use the RabbitMQ command line tool with a parameter called list queues. You execute that. And then you'll see something printed out listing queues for vhost slash. vhost is a concept we're going to talk about later on. But here you can see all names. Hello world, there's just one queue. Messages, it has one message inside. And if you don't trust me, you can go back to your sender, restart it. Another message has been sent. Now let's open up a command line window again, execute our list queues command again. And now you should see hello world, the hello world queue contains two messages, exactly what you wanted. The problem is the RabbitMQ command line tool doesn't give you the opportunity to have a look inside the queue and print out, for example, the message bodies to get the text that we wrote is this the matrix. And for that, you have to use either programming languages or the web interface. We're going to use the web interface now. So open up a browser like so. Go to localhost and then uh, 15672. Login, guest, guest. Click queues, you see an overview of all the queues. It's just one queue, hello world, which is fine. It has two messages inside, no message rates. That means no incoming messages, no delivered messages. So that is all being set to zero messages a second. When you click the queue, again, you see a couple of statistics, uh, which don't matter now. But if you scroll down, you can see a couple of other, let's say menu items you can click. Consumers, you see all the consumers listening to that queue. We have no consumers at the moment. Bindings, we're going to talk about later again. Then you can publish messages. Exactly what we did just now with our Java program. You can simply publish messages inside the RabbitMQ web interface. Get messages means get the messages and print out the body, exactly what we want. But you can also delete the queue, purge the queue, which means making the queue empty, move messages and whatnot. But for now, let's have a look at get messages. You can see messages being set to one, so get me one message and I'll just get it. Right, I can see the server reported one message remaining. Payload is this, the matrix. That was one of the messages we sent. Now the thing is, let's go back to our queues overview. If you hit F5, you can see there's still two messages inside. How can that be? Because we just consumed one message, but now there's still two inside. Again, when you step back, you can see that you get a warning here, getting messages from a queue is a destructive action, which means that the web interface actually consumes the message, but it has an acknowledge mode. And you can see here, do not acknowledge the message, requeue it again, which means you requeue the message. And acknowledge message, requeue false, which means yes, the message could be received. Do not requeue it. So until or unless you set it to acknowledge message, requeue false, you will simply requeue the message again and always end up in this case with two messages. If you set it to acknowledge message and get the message now, you get the uh, same info printed out, one message remaining. But now if you check out the queues, refresh the page a couple of times, you can see there's one message in total. You actually consumed the message and you could even see the delivery rate here going up for a tiny millisecond or whatever. These are the main two ways. Play with the command line tool. Also play with the uh, queues tab that you can find here and try to publish a message inside the web interface, get the message again, purge the queue again, just to get comfortable with the web interface. And then up next, we can finally write the first queue consumer and start consuming messages.